Hello, hello. We will just wait for the notifications to go out and uh, give a moment for everyone to hop on here. Kimmy! Hey, hey! So glad to see you on here. Hey, Rana! All right, yay! All right, notifications are getting faster. This is good. Um, awesome, awesome. All right, so now that there's more than two people on here, we'll just, um, we'll go ahead and just get started. Um, hey, Sheila. Maybe I won't get started because <laughs> I'm going to start saying hi to everybody. Hi, Beverly. How are you guys doing? Ah, oh, this is so great. First broadcast of the year. Ah, I feel like I haven't done one in forever, but I know I just did one not too long ago, right? Sarah. Hey, girly. Oh, goodness. I, I love watching your um, Insta stories and you keeping me updated on everything going on there in Australia. And um, I just wanted to say that, you know, I know we are all standing in agreement with all of our Australian brothers and sisters. And we are calling forth the rain and we are calling for the fires to cease um, that the destruction has to stop. So we are standing with you, um, praying for you. And, um, yeah, this just, it's heartbreaking to, to see the, the footage. Okay. Who did I miss? Um, Marilou, I hope I said your name right, sweetie. All right. All right. All right. All right. So Cheryl, hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, if you guys feel led um, to share, go ahead. That's the only time I'm gonna say that. All right, um, Dawn, hey, girly, my uh, <laughs> my 2 a.m. laughing partner. I uh, love that. Um, okay, I'm so squirrely with this, I'm, I can't help it. <laughs> I'm going to try, I'm gonna try to multitask. I, I know I can do it. All right, so, um, I was just, I was having a conversation with um, my friend Kim the other day and we were talking about this particular scripture and and we were like, it's really kind of contradictory if you really just kind of look at that, at that part and, um, hey Autumn, um, you know, and, and it can be kind of confusing and, and after that conversation, you know, we kind of had this like real um, awesome, you know, revelatory kind of moment in our conversation and I absolutely love when that happens and and it was really great and it was really encouraging yeah she looks like squirrel squirrel oh my gosh it's so bad I'm gonna try my best to like stay focused um and and it was really great and <laughs> Oh, you guys, it's it's too much. I can't share that joke. <laughs> I'll lose it. I, this broadcast will be over with if I even go there, Dawn. Um, another day. <laughs> so anyway, after this conversation that I had with Kim, um, it was really great and, and all was well with the world, right? And all day today, it has just not left me. And... I will say that over the last um, three nights, I have had no sleep. Like I have just been up, just tossing and turning. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'm supposed to be awake and maybe I'm supposed to be praying, but I don't really have that like understanding of what I'm supposed to be praying about. So, you, you know, then you just kind of pray in the spirit and, and then I lay back down and I'm tossing and turning and, and it feels very much um, like something warfare is going on and and in conjunction with that hi amy hi emily sorry if i'm missing you guys popping on um in conjunction with the past three nights that i've had this lack of sleep um and then this conversation with kim and then today i just kind of had that it was like i could just kind of hear um just kind of things going on in the spirit and and it was that we're five days into this new year. Haven't we started yet? Haven't we crossed over yet? Haven't we been, you know, 
making this leap forward for a while now? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, but I fully believe that this first week has been um, an intense pushback. Um, I'm not saying the enemy is winning because he doesn't win, right? He doesn't get to push us back. Um, but it's a full on battle that's been going on to um, frustrate and, and prevent us from moving forward. Um, oh yeah, girl. Um, yeah, it, it's, I don't even think I've been having any dreams, which is strange, you know, cause a lot of times I'll have some dreams, but I haven't had any that I'm remembering. Um, but anyway, um, and so I've just kind of been asking the Lord about this, you know, like what is really kind of going on? And, and I think for one, I just want to say the push, the pushback has been intense. Yes. But there's nothing that's going to block you or stop you from moving forward. There's nothing in the way. Like the, the path has been cleared. But there are just things that kind of, you know, come up and, and feel like it's pushing you back. It feels like it's slowing you down. But there is such an acceleration on the time right now um, that it's just nothing is going to come um to uh, come in the way of the Lord's plans being made manifest in this moment. Um, and because of that, I have felt there's been kind of this, this um, tug of war, this, this um, place of tension um, between, you know, um, the times of things, right? And, and so the scripture that, um, that we were talking about was that scripture in Habakkuk 2, um, verses one through three. And I think a lot of us, I, for one, I have verse, uh, two and three. I, I couldn't remember where it broke up. Um, the verses two and three, I actually have that like written down and like pinned on my vision board. And so I wanted to just kind of read the scripture and I want to kind of share, um, what Kim and I had kind of, um, had that revelatory um, bomb kind of hit us. And, and it might be not be new for some of you, um, but it just felt fresh. It felt like a breath of fresh air and a, and a fresh wind that kind of blew over us in the midst of that conversation. So I'm going to read this um, scripture to you. And I'm just going to kind of give you like some little notes that the Lord gave me um, as I sat and asked him what he wanted me to share, because I went to just write this down today. I'm just going to share this with you. I, I went to write this down to just kind of put that out there in a written word and I could not get the words on the paper. Like it was like I was trying to write it in a foreign language. It wasn't making sense. And I'm like, come on, Lord, like I know you want me to share this. Um, but he would not let me write it down. You know, there are just some things he wants us to speak out loud. And so I really felt the burden to just speak this out loud over you. Um, and, and maybe it becomes something that you then, um, repeat in your time with him and over your circumstances, over those things, um, that he has set upon you for this year. Okay. So here we go. Um, Hab Habakkuk, I think that's how you're supposed to say it. Um, chapter two verses one through three, and this is from the NIV. I love reading all the different versions, but I'm not going to go through all that tonight. Okay. So here it says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. And the part that um, Kim and I were talking about is in that part of verse three. It says, though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. It almost sounds like a contradiction, right? I will read this part on the um, New King James Version because it says, um, though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And I, you know, we both sat there and were like, wait a minute, you know, and, and as we were talking, um, 
Oh, and in the New King James Version, it says, you know, for the vision, write the vision down and make it plain. But then the New King James Version says, write the revelation. So there's something right there, right? Um, and, and what we are talking about is it, it's saying that if it tarries, wait for it. But it's surely going to come because it was given to you by God, right? So it's like it's one of his promises. His words aren't empty. They're not, you know, they're, his promises are not void. They don't go out of style. They don't, you know, not come true. Um, but it was saying, so if it tarries, wait for it. But it's surely going to come without delay. And and what we began to talk about and, and what kind of hit me was maybe what that's talking about is the that point of tension that I was saying earlier we're in that this this tension point of we are waiting for it in our current time in our in our uh, chronos time but it's not tarrying it's not on delay in God's chronos time I mean his kairos time I'm gonna get these flipped around aren't I his kairos time there is never a delay in his kairos time his Kairos time is always perfect. It's our Kronos time that even though he created it and we function and we live within it, um, it there's always going to be these, these tension points between um, the, the Kairos time coming and colliding with our Kronos time in order to make manifest that vision, that revelation that has been made plain, that's been written down plain and clear um it's that vision and the revelation of the vision that comes that it talks about in in the previous verse um i'm going to dive into that in just a moment and so um what i felt the lord wanted me to say to you tonight is that we are kind of currently in a very short window of that tension there's a there's a very short window of time before kairos collides with our chronos before his set time is made manifest in our current time, okay? It's going to align. It will align and it will come to pass. It will not delay. Hi, Tara. Hi, Karen. Hi, Rick. Hi, everybody that's popped on. I'm sorry if I missed you. Um, and so what he wanted me to say to you tonight is that in this short window of tension, in this short window of this waiting, um, he does not intend for you to um, get frustrated and battle that frustration. Um, doubt has tried to come in. I had this picture the other day. I was totally saying it. Um, this is a little squirrel moment. I'm sorry. So I had this vision, you know, like the old um, uh, Ghostbuster movie, you know, the, the character Slimer. Like if he like hits you, like he get, he slimes you. Well, that's what I felt was happening to me the other day. I felt like I was getting slimed by doubt. And, and I was frustrated and I'm like, wait a minute, this, I'm not supposed to be, you know, battling this. I'm not supposed to be feeling this doubt. I'm not supposed to be battling this frustration. And so that's what I felt that the Lord really wanted me to speak about tonight and not just try to write down a word. He wanted me to say, he is not meaning, he is not intending for you to battle f uh, frustration or doubt or fear um, because that is not what this is right now right now this is just that though it tarries in our chronos it will not delay kairos so we are standing in this tension point and he's saying just keep writing the vision keep speaking out the revelation make it plain like it is coming he said it was coming i know it's coming i know what it looks like right now it looks like i'm having to wait longer you know it's that whole um of understanding his timing, his Kairos timing, his absolute perfection. It's just our understanding of it sometimes is not. And that's when that doubt and that frustration tries to come in and embattle us and, and you know, and drag us into a into a war or a battle that we were never supposed to be drug into. And so I really felt like that's why the Lord wanted me to speak it right now because he doesn't want you battling it. He doesn't want you um, frustrated. He doesn't want you full of doubt. He wants you fully confident like you were, you know, before the new year hit, like you were a week ago, like you were two weeks ago. I I know I felt so many people just so excited 
and he wants you to be um, resting in that excitement. So I'm going to back up just a little bit on the scripture and I'm going to kind of give you a little bit more revelation that um, he kind of gave me. Um, in verse one, it says, I will stand my watch. And what that says to me is that in my current position, in my current location, in my current vocation, in the current stance of where I'm at, I will stand my watch. I will plant my feet where he has me because he has me in this set moment for a set time, correct? So I will stand my watch. Then the next um, sentence says, and station myself on the ramparts. So not only am I going to stand confidently, it may, I mean, where I'm standing is not where I wanna be. That is not the, the vision that I have, right? My vision is not for here, it's out here, but I'm going to stand because this is where he has me in this moment, okay? And then station myself on the rampart. Well, the rampart was a tower. That says to me that I'm stationing myself um, with a higher vision. I'm gonna set my vision, I'm gonna set my sights on what he has shown me in the spirit, what I know to be true, what his promises are. So my position is higher above where my current station is. Okay, so our station is here, our vision is here in the ramparts, set in heavenly places. Our, we, our, we are seated in heavenly places, a higher position than our current reality, correct? And then, um, and it says, I will look or I will watch to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Now, in the um, New King James ver um, Version, it says, um, what he or what I will answer when I am corrected. And to me, this talks to me a lot about a preparation. And I know everyone's kind of going, oh, more preparation, because I totally had that thought. Um, you know, just like with the whole Ecclesiastes 3 1, you know, there's a time for this and a time for that. It's almost eye rolling. It's like, oh, Lord, please don't make me wait any longer, right? And, um, and so what this said to me was a time of preparation. And I wanted to write down, um, because he said you have your ears and your heart positioned to receive whatever at this current time. So in this moment of tension, in this moment of waiting for uh, Kairos and Kronos to collide and manifest, he is still preparing us. And sometimes he's kind of still kind of cutting away a little bit. You know, sometimes he's correcting us just a little bit um, and, and preparing us for that set vision, for that revelation, right? And, and so we have to be open and willing to receive that correction and that, um, and that adjustment as we are in that tension point, right? And then, then the Lord also answers, you know, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. And, and what that says to me, the heralding is not an announcing. When we write down the visions that he gives us, when he write down the revelations that he gives us and we herald it, we can then run with it. I really feel there's something massive. I mean, I know there's a lot of amazing words out there about 2020 being the word, you know, the year of the mouth, you know, the spoken word. There is a lot of weight in that. And I think that's why he didn't want me writing this down. He just, he's, he wants us to speak. He wants us to herald his words. He wants us to herald and announce his visions and his plans and his purpose over our situation as it comes as an, at an um, individual basis, but also what he gives you for others. He wants you to speak it. This is a year of boldness. You've got to step out. You know, we've got to come into this place of being um, perfectly fine and at peace with being uncomfortable with his instructions. And, um, you know, because everything that he gives us, it's not just for us, it's for others. You know, like that conversation I was sharing that, you know, Kim and I were having, we, it, it, it was for us in that moment, 
but he wouldn't let it go because he's like, no, you need to share this with others. This is for others. There are people battling and they're going, I'm only five years into this new year and it's, and it's just like last year. I've seen that a few times written out loud. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, don't write that. But it's not. It is not like last year. This is a new year. He is doing a new thing. He is making a new way where there seems to be no way right? He is the Alpha and the Omega. We are functioning in a Kronos time that he created, but we are trusting in and looking from our ramparts at the Kairos time that is coming. And we know that is going to collide. And so um, as we get, you know, and then it just kind of um, moves on down, you know, that, um, the, oh, here we go. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. Again, that's that Kairos time. And um, it speaks of the end. So what that says to me is that's that, that's that new thing. It speaks of the end of the current place that you're in. And it begins the new thing that you're seeing, that you've set your sights on, that that vision has been written and heralded, right? So we are heralding the new thing. And it speaks of the end of the old thing, correct? And then, um, and then of course, it goes back into that, um, though it linger, wait for it. Um, it will certainly come and it will not delay. So just know that um, it's not going to delay. There is no delay on his um, Kairos time. And um, we just need to put a delay on our um, misunderstanding of things. And, and that has been a prayer of mine that I've had all year last year was just, Lord, let me... Um, bring a, a wisdom and an understanding of your time, not my ideas of it. Because every time I settle into my ideas of his timing on things, I instantaneously began to uh, battle doubt and frustration over situations that I never should have been frustrated or doubtful over, right? Because that, I mean, and that's just, you know, where he wants us. He wants us to remember these things. He's bringing them to us so that we don't um we don't get stuck in a moment that we should never be stuck in he's wanting us running forward heralding his promises heralding his word heralding the visions that he's given us um you know some of us have held visions for a very long time a very long time like i know there are some people that have have held a vision they've had it written down and made it plain for 20 years for 10 years and I'm telling you, there is a set time that is happening. I can't even quite um, articulate it, but I know that he is he is moving and shifting things that have been long awaited for, that these long awaited things are going to be long awaited no longer. And that's why I say this tension point is so short lived. And that's why he's saying, I don't want you battling this. Just keep your eyes high, right? Set yourself in the ramparts. And um, and hold on to that vision and make it plain because it will not tarry. That's what I felt like he was saying. Like skip over the part like if it tarries. I don't feel like there is any um, moments of waiting right now that it is not tarrying. It is coming. It will surely be um, because what he says will be. Everything that he speaks is so purposed and so full of of weight and movement and manifestation and um and he has prepared us all and i don't want to sound so like um cliche or buzzwordy but it, it, we have all been brought to this point in time for such a time as this like we have all been purposed to, to be moving and clicking together at this point in time and, and because we are all moving and clicking together, he doesn't want anyone stuck battling frustration and doubt in this moment. And, and I don't find it coincidental at all that, that today is the fifth. Five being grace. Like there is a fresh grace and a fresh wind being blown over every single one of us and our circumstances. Because I don't know about you, but the first five days up until you know today, it's felt a lot like trudging through mud. And, um, you know, we're kind of, I don't know, I just feel like there's just kind of a new awakening that is coming. And, um, and I just wanted to encourage you guys um, that, that that Kairos and that Kronos are about to collide. 
And, um, and so I just wanted to encourage you guys in that. Um, I wanted to kind of scroll through this really quick before I hop over to another kind of different, um, oops, I hit something. Hopefully I didn't disconnect it. I, <laughs> yes, Dawn, pierce the darkness, wield your sword. Yep. You keep speaking those words, you know, because here's the other thing, you know, and I always kind of come back to certain stories um, that the Lord likes to highlight sometimes, you know, when I, you know, you talk about Joshua and the, and the walls of Jericho for six days, they just marched. They just walked, you know, they just walked around and it was on that seventh day that they made the sound and the sound is what caused it to crumble. And I think that the sound has been, has been heard. I believe the sound has been crumbling the walls and move and removing the blockages, um, shattering the ceilings of delay. Um, I believe that that's been happening probably since September of last year. I have felt so many moments of time that have shaken and shifted in the spirit. And it's like, I know things are breaking through. I know things are moving out of the way. All of these things, these brick walls that we've just continually hit ourselves up against over the last decade, over the last five years, eight years, however long it has been, there are some big things that people have been contending for for a very, very long time. And I have felt this, you know, continual um, crumbling down um, over these things. And that's why I'm very confidently saying to you right now, there are no blockages hindering you. There is nothing standing in the way. The Lord has cleared the path, but there's that tension point and, and, and we just have to keep it clear, right? We have to keep our, our, our sights focused. Um, so as, as I was kind of studying and, and praying, um, about what the Lord wanted me to say tonight, because half, you know, most of the time I'm just like, I have no idea. I'm just going to kind of hit, start the live button and then let her rip. Right. I have no idea. Um, and, and my eye caught a verse still in Habakkuk chapter two. Um, and it, it was down in, um, verse 14 and it says for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And I have felt so strongly that that is what is happening. Um, you know, we've, we've watched some really big declarations being um, spoken out and shared on social media um, about the goodness of God, his healing power, um, his resurrection power. And, and we know that he, um, is going to come and his glory will shine through all of those things. Um, whether they manifest in the way that we want them to or not, his glory is still shown. His name is still being lifted high. His name was still being declared. And, and I know that we are going to see the fullness of that glory. And I really, as I'm sitting here talking, I keep hearing like the golden era. And, and I just feel like that that is kind of um, a very good description of what I see over this year. It's like this, this liquid gold that's like being poured over the church, over his people. Um, and that liquid gold is his glory. And we are going to be shining his glory in everything that we say and do in this year. Um, because none of us, I mean, we all just want to be cloaked in it, right? We don't need our individual faces seen. We don't need our individual names known. We don't need our voices heard. We need him to be seen. And that's all we desire, right? We just want his name heard, his face seen, and his glory to shine. And that's what I really see um, over all of us this year, that everything that we set our hands to has already been cloaked in his glory and people are going to see it. They're going to feel it manifest. They're going to see it manifest. Like I am so confident of this, that I believe that every time that we step into a place, into a situation, into a conversation, like the conversation I had with Kim the other night, his revelation just hit us out of nowhere. And it was just like, oh, that makes sense now. 
you know, before it felt like a contradiction and then it was like, boom, you know, and I really feel that that is what's going to happen in every conversation we step into. It's just, he's just going to come and invade. You know, if you're talking about someone that's needing healing in their body, I, my expectation of that it is now, that it's an immediate thing, that it's not going to tarry, that they won't have to wait for their healing. You know, I fully believe that this year of his glory shining through all of his kids, that he is just so like going to show up and show out in every situation that you put his name to. You know, his promises aren't for us to sign our names at the bottom of the contract. That's his name at the bottom of that. And we know that he is going to fulfill it, right? And, um, and I think in all of that, um, I wrote this down um, because I really wanted to speak this again, speaking um, that I really believe that the Lord is bringing a deep, deep well of revelation to his kids right now in this moment. And this deep revelation, this well that we're going to be continually drawing from is going to carry us through this entire year and into the next year. I really believe this is going to be a continual flow as long as you remain positioned at his feet. You know, we have to be re remain positioned like that alabaster box, not fully um, put together, not holding the full contents of the perfume, but broken out and, and releasing that perfume everywhere we go um, with the residual oil just kind of dripping from us. And it's not ours, right? It's him to permeate through us. And, um, and I believe that revelation is also um, partnered with wisdom um, as we continue to step forward every day and every moment and everything that we come into um, that is just going to be there. And it's going to, um, I also felt that it was going to be like his set timing on things. I believe that this year it's, it's going to be a declaration of his set time, his Kairos time, I believe is going to be hitting everybody's lives and all these situations, all these prayers you've been praying like rapid fire. I really believe that the time of waiting on these things is just done. Like this is a year of, of just continual, like blowing our minds that Ephesians 320, like him showing up and showing out in ways that we never even dreamed, thought or imagined. And, and it's just going to be above and beyond. I mean, just so above and beyond, like, I don't even have the words to say, um, to like articulate just this excitement, um, that I feel. And it's like, I don't even know what that manifestation looks like. I don't know how he's going to answer these prayers. I just know that he's going to do it. And, um, and, and, you know, but in order to do this, you know, we've got to have that, you know, that our feet set, we are setting ourselves like in, in verse one of Habakkuk two chapter, you know, chapter two, verse one, um, that we set ourselves, you know, we can't be so, um, focused on future things that we become so distracted with our current things. Um, you know, I caught myself doing that. I got so focused on things that I was seeing in the spirit that I knew they were coming in the future that I forgot to, to steward, um, what was happening in the now. I forgot to steward what was happening in the current and what he was asking me to be doing in the current was positioning myself, setting myself in the current to receive the correction and the refining in order to step into the future thing. Because if we don't steward our now, we won't steward the future. We, if we don't receive the correction now, we won't be corrected in the future. You know, th that allows pride to kind of come in, right? So we've got to be cemented. And, and I posted something at the beginning of the year. Um, it was just like a little picture meme about every knee will bow. And I really felt that that was the position that we are to be taking um, this year, that no matter what he has set our hands to, no matter where he is placing our feet, no matter what he is asking us to speak to, we have to be postured at his feet. And I know some people just want to be like Martha. They want to be up and running around. But I'm telling you, there's something massive that shifts and changes in your current situation, in relationships, whatever it is you're contending for. There's something massive that happens when you are doing nothing 
was sitting at his feet. I don't know why I needed felt I needed to share that, but I but I did, and uh, I know it's purposed. So there you have that. Um, and then um, as I was praying before this, um, I I began to see uh, just a lot of people that have that have had these blueprints over something, over a vision, over a dream, over um, something in their lives, whether it's, um, you know, a, a, a prodigal child or a prodigal parent. Uh, I know you guys have heard me talk about that before, how how the roles kind of reversed for, for me and, and my relationship with my dad. Um, and I felt like these people have had these blueprints for so long um, that they began to collect dust. And, and as I saw this happening, I just, I saw these people with these blueprints and they, they've been laid out on this table for so long. And I just felt the Lord, like I saw him like come in and he just blew his breath over the blueprints. And I saw the clouds of dust just evaporate and it was just like brand new. It was like brand new blueprints. And then began to talk to me about the construction process, about the architect and the builder. And, and the partnership between the architect and the builder. And we all know that we are not the architect. We are not the ones that drew out those blueprints. It was him that gave them to us, right? And so what he's saying is to partner with him as the architect um, that now is the set time that building is going to begin. And and as this, you know, the, the dust was blown off of this, he was talking to me about the architect and the builder and the relationship and how many meetings they have behind closed doors before a piece of equipment is even set on the land. And I believe that up until this point, so I'm talking about the past, from the moment you received those blueprints, you've been having these meetings, these closed doors, me, closed door meetings with the architect. And you were just saying, I'm ready to build. I'm ready to build. But it's been planning. Because if you're really honest, um, those blueprints, when he gave them to you, just say five years ago just for sake of time, right? <laughs> he gave those blueprints to you five years ago. But when you began praying about those and having those conversations with the architect about those blueprints five years ago, what you are seeing over those blueprints now, five years later, you have so many more details over it, right? You have so many more plans. You have so many more um, visions that you've began to have dreams about certain parts of, like if this was a blueprint of a house, you've had so many visions and dreams over the kitchen, so many visions and dreams over that living room, and you've seen faces come into those rooms, right? And, and so what he's saying now is that um, these meetings are always continuous. You've had the planning meetings up till now, and now you're putting the equipment on the land. Now the build begins. and But the meetings between the architect and the builder continue on because the architect has an idea of the structure. The builder has some wisdom and some knowledge to begin to do the work, right? We are the builders. We are to do the work, but we have to work with the architect because they have a science behind that building and the structure that the builder only ha only sees in part. And so um, I, I really felt that the Lord was saying, he's blown the dust off of the blueprints. You guys have been having these meetings. You're talking about it. But now we're putting the equipment on the land. And now the build is beginning. And, um, and that is really um, what he wanted me to share with you guys tonight. You know, that in that building, the glory will be seen, right? The architect and the builder work together. And um, and I know that we all have some big God um, blueprints 
some big God visions, some big God dreams, um, some big God revelation. And, and, and we all know that we're sitting here looking at these things going, only you can make this happen, Lord. There is nothing I can do in my power to make it happen, right? And, and what he's saying is we have been meeting, we've been working together, and you know now what you didn't know then is that you are unable to do this. You are unable to step fully in this without me. And now that he's expanded the vision, he's expanded the revelation, and, and he has brought what we were kind of functioning in in, in Kronos time, in, in the waiting, you know, for this set time, that I fully believe that this year um, is when Kairos manifests over all of these long-awaited things because I just feel such an acceleration um, and such a rapid fire of, of things coming and hitting people's lives um, that I think it's just going to leave us all going, holy cow. Um, like I just, I, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> I really don't. I, it's just such an amazing time. Um, and, and I feel so like, uh, humbled and honored and privileged to even be here at this point in time. Right? Like there's so many who, um, who saw this year coming, but didn't make it. You know, whether it's they they decided to just take a detour or um, or whatever it was, um, I just I felt that um, that this is the year of the mouth and, and this is the year for you to use yours. Um, you know, I think sometimes people um, see that as um, a microphone and a platform and it's not. It's just using your voice in the place that you're at, speaking to the things um, that the Lord has given you, speaking them out loud, um, because we know that you know the enemy does like to crawl around and and try to try to come in and 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 do all of that. But but when the Lord says that no weapon formed will prosper, that's exactly what that means. It's exactly what that means. He's trying to form weapons all day long, um, you know, like doubt and frustration. And I think that's why I felt so burdened today, um, because I felt like there were a lot of people that were feeling that, that were feeling that frustration that, you know, like, you know, we want to wake up tomorrow morning and suddenly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this has changed, this has shifted. Um, and I do believe that we are in that time. I do believe that that's happening um, but like I said, we're just in that tension point, um, of, of waiting for, for, uh, Kairos to hit our Kronos, um, to make manifest. And I, I really do believe that, um, that when that, that bell gongs or that, that alarm sounds, um, that you're going to begin to see things, you know, really, really, um, hit in a way that you're going to go, whoa, I felt like this was never going to happen. And then, you know, you're going to look back and you're going to go, oh, wow, it did happen. Um, you know, I was kind of giggling um, about, you know, everyone says, you know, um, hindsight is twenty twenty, And, you know, hindsight is that, you know, you're looking back and you're going, oh, yeah, I see that now. You know, like I'm looking back over the last year. Oh, I see why that hasn't happened yet. I'm looking back over the last eight years. Oh, I see why, you know, I'm still here or why this hasn't happened yet. I see. And and I just guess I felt like if hindsight is 2020 and it gives us a broader view, it gives us a broader vision of the plans and the purpose and how things kind of mold us and shape us and get us ready for this set time, I think it should also give us the confidence in our forward vision of knowing that um, our steps are ordered, you know, if we're surrendered to him, our steps are ordered, you know, I felt, um, yeah, I just feel like I need to say this, I don't know if this is for one person or many, I feel like it's for many, um, that God does not have a plan B for you, he has a 
purpose set for you with a lot of plans in order to get that purpose to happen. And, and I don't know if this is, I, I don't know. I, I think I had a lot of toxic teaching, toxic religious teaching, um, growing up. And I'll never forget it because someone had said at some point in time in my very impressionable years that if you don't do what the Lord has called you to, like if you just like say no, he's just going to give it to someone else. And I don't really know that I believe that to be true. You know, um, I don't know if I'm going to get stoned at the center of town here by saying this, but my thought process is this if he set things within you before time even began he purposed you for something very specific that only you can do why would he take that from you and give it to someone else that just doesn't make sense to me and so i guess i felt like i needed to say that because you are so specifically purposed for this moment in time to do what only you can do. And although you may be sitting in a place of circumstance, of consequence, of, of whatever, um, there are many detours that the gift of free will kind of sends us on sometimes because a lot of times we make choices that aren't very wise. Um, but on that detour, we all hit a place of repentance, right? And I see that as, you know, the Lord has this straight and narrow path for us and, and our free will, you know, we kind of go off on these tangents and we take these detours, but on this detour, we hit a place where we're going, ah, I messed up, you know, where we hit that place of repentance and we're asking the Lord to forgive us. And he's going, cool, you turn back onto my plan, back on the straight and narrow, because I need you. You know, that's what, that's what daddy's saying. He's like, okay, good. You know, you, you, you see this, you see the, the point here, you know, I gave you the free will, but now you're choosing to, to be in the plan that I have for you and the purpose that I have for you. And, and I guess I just, I've really felt like maybe someone sitting there saying, I've taken too many detours. I've delayed God's purpose over me for so long. I don't think he'll ever get me back on track. Um, I've messed up too much. He can't use me. Um, oh, what else, what else are you saying? I mean, I, I think I've probably said them all at some point in my life. Um, you know, I, I I just felt like you needed to hear that his purpose over you has an absolution for you to like an absolute that's the wrong word. He has an absolute way of getting you back to where he wants you to step into the fullness that he has for you and that you although you have taken your free will and and made the choices you've made you aren't powerful enough to ruin his purpose over you and you know and 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 i can say that because i have lived in the repentance right when we are truly repentant that gives him permission to just swoop in and take you back like that is what he is, that he is so hopeful that you look and go, you know what, Lord, I really just want you to handle this. I really want you to take the reins again. I know I took him here and I know I took him here and I know I, I took him here. I learned now, <laughs> you know, I've learned after 50 times of, you know, trying to take control um, that I'm not so good at it. Right. And he just comes and he's like, yes, here we go. And he just, he'll heal you and he'll bring you right back and he will set you on this path so that you are not delayed anymore. And I just feel like that that is, that is the moment that we are in, right? He is saying no more delay. You know, all my kids that have seen my face, they've repented, they've given me the reins again, no more delay. 
You know, you're not going to battle that frustration any longer. You're not going to battle that doubt anymore, you know, because your faith, even the smallest, um, what, it, what that scripture, you know, the smallest bit of a mustard seed, our faith is basically just coming into agreement with what he's spoken over us. So my teeny tiny mustard seed, I'm going to set it on that giant blueprint that he just blew the dust off of. And I'm going to say, I'm going to come into agreement with you. I may not have much faith, but I'm going to put that little seed on the top of that blueprint. And I'm going to trust that you and I, as the architect and the builder, that we are going to get this thing going. We are going to start, you know, uh, breaking ground. We're going to start laying the foundation. We're going to start building up all of these things that you have set within me to build for such a time as this. I, I just fully, fully believe that the bride is going to be glorious and just trumpeting and heralding his name because there are so many things that he is overturning. You know, just like he did for the Israelites with the Egyptians. He overturned their captivity into freedom. He overturned their sickness into none feeble. He overturned their um, years of slavery and not having anything into being weighed down with the wealth of Egypt. Their captors literally paid them to leave. And that's what I feel. I feel like we, as the bride, as the church, have lived under so much unjust um, captivity that the Lord is overturning that in this moment of time. And we are going to be weighed down with the payback of the enemy of everything that he has stolen from us in the seasons throughout generations that there is something massive that is shifting in this moment of time. You know, nobody was was hyping about uh, the 10 years ago when we hit a new decade. Why is this one so special? Right? There is something new, something huge that has shifted into this year. This year, there is something so significant. I don't quite have the words for it yet, but I know the Lord is speaking that to a lot of people. If you have any ear to hear at all, you know something massive is happening. Something massive is, sh is shifting. You know, and I and I get the sense that kind of like the Israelites, you know, they. All of a sudden, this guy comes out of the desert. They knew who he was because he used to reside in Pharaoh's house. But all of a sudden, he's different. He is not the man that fled, right? And all of a sudden, they're seeing signs and wonders. Now, granted, they, were, they came in, <laughs> in disastrous ways. You know, they came in, in the form of plagues. But I think there had to have been some hope stirred in the midst of those Israelites, because the Lord was saying, let my people go. And I think over the last, I don't even know what timeline to put on it, but generations past up till now, the Lord has been declaring, let my people go. And I believe that we have seen some signs and wonders that have given us this this unction and the stirring to go, oh, something's happening. Something's happening. I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. I know something's shifting. I know something's changing. And then that night before the final plague hits, what were they told to do? They were to commune with each other as a family with their cloaks tucked in. That meant they were readied and dressed to leave for a journey they they didn't sit down at the feasting table with their sandals on or with their cloaks on, but they were instructed to do it that night. And what happened the next day? The next day, the Egyptians paid them to leave the cat, the very place that they held them prisoner. Come on. I mean, there is something massive that's happened for th that's happening this year. There is some massive overturning happening. And I just, I know that I know that I know that I know that we are going to be seeing massive signs and wonders hitting not just our own personal lives because what hits us is for others too. It's, you know, we are those heavenly 
funnels. We don't walk out into the desert to squander it. No, we are walking out and into the promised land. We're not wandering. We're not going to have to be begging and pleading to cross, you know, the, and it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we're not going to repeat the Israelites what is happening for us now because we live in a new covenant under the new covenant. We are co-heirs with Christ, right? We are the sons and daughters being revealed that all creation has been crying out for. I mean, that is what this, that liquid gold glory that I'm talking about earlier, that's what that is. We are being revealed, but in our revealing, it's really just revealing his glory. And I believe that we are going to be seeing an unprecedented amount of signs and wonders in every place that we step our feet. We just have to be bold enough to step into it and be obedient, right? It's still going to require our obedience. It's still going to require our hands to be the builder, right? And I just feel such a, a weightiness, a very heavy weightiness to steward that well. And, um, and that's in our words, it's in our actions, and it's how we carry ourselves. You know, I, I, I just, I know that I know that I know that um, the Lord is just going to show up in ways that we have not yet seen or thought of. Um, you know, what no eye has seen and what no ear has heard. Um, that's the scripture that kind of keeps ringing in my, in my spirit. Um, and, and that goes into, in, in, uh, tandem, um, in conjunction, it's tied to Ephesians 3:20. you know, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, you know, that is going to be above and beyond all we could ever ask, think, or imagine. You know, that he is going to show up and show out. And our testimonies are going to be only God. This was so God. There is no way possible I could have even manufactured this, created this, made this stuff up. I, I feel like you just can't make this stuff up. You know, like that, that whole thing. You just can't make this stuff up. I feel like that that is going to kind of be the tagline um, for the year 2020 and beyond that you just can't make this stuff up. This is so God just showing up everywhere you go. Um, and in every situation in your life that you've been contending for, I really feel like there's going to be some miraculous, um, just kind of as I'm talking, it's kind of hitting me. I really feel like there's going to be some, um, miraculous, reconciliations happening in families and I believe that that miraculous manifestation of reconciliation in your families um, is because you have stewarded walking through the pain um, you've stewarded your intercession you've stewarded um, your forgiveness and willing to forgive without apology um, you know the tears that have been cried over those relationships, the brokenness, the hurts, um, they are um, springing forth um, something miraculous and amazing. And, and I think it's even going to surprise you, even though it's something you've been expecting. It's like, um, it's like expecting the unexpected. Um, I think they're going to come in a way that surprises you, um, that leaves you testifying still yeah i interceded over this yes i was praying for this prodigal yes i was praying for this restoration but only god could bring it um i just i really believe that is going to happen because he is all about family um he is restoring all that can be restored he is reconciling all that can be reconciled um his restoration is always better than it ever was before. So if what you had before the break, before the hurt was great, if it was really awesome and then this thing comes in and just, you know, just blows it up. If what you were contending for and interceding over was, was what was awesome before, imagine how much better it's going to be even now. It's just better, you know, and I feel like, um, you know, I just need to say that, you know, the visions that you have, these blueprints that the Lord just breathed on for you, um, there's going to be provision for the vision. Um, I just think, you know, there are some really big things 
that I would call big ticket items. You don't have to fret or, 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 or freak out over that. Um, the Lord is going to handle it. He's the architect. He knows the cost. And, and he wouldn't have given it to you had he thought you wouldn't steward it well. And so uh, I think that um, in those big ticket items, he's going to lay some things in front of you that aren't big ticket items. Um, that Can you trust him for this small thing? That's been a test that he's, um, he's had me kind of walking through just this week. Um, you know, there's this one thing, this one small, I mean, it's, it's big to me. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's small. Um, but he's had me believing him and trusting him for that small thing. Stewarding um, my time, um, stewarding my intercession. And making sure that I don't battle doubt um, over that tiny provision. I think sometimes we have all the faith in the world for all these massive things to come in. And yet we lose our faith over the smallest things. And, um, and we get so frustrated over the smallest things. And I just feel like those small things are such big seeds. And... Um, and I just, I don't know, I guess I just felt like I needed to share that. Um, so yeah, that's, that went a whole lot longer than I thought it was going to. I thought it was just going to be a really quick word, but clearly the Lord had something else he wanted to share. And um, I'm just praying that that encouraged you, um, you know, just keep sowing those seeds and, and, and understand that this point of tension in, uh, in the timing, it's very short lived. Um, and you can have... Um, the hope and the expectation that this overturn, you are a part of it. It's not like only certain people are going to get to move ahead and you're going to be stuck behind. There is none of that. Um, so don't even go down that comparison trail. Just don't even. Because um, that will just, comparison just kills. Comparison kills everything. So don't, um, don't do that. Know that you are moving ahead with everyone else because like I said we are all connected and when one goes we all go so um, I'm just praying that um, that was encouraging um, I'm praying that um, this sowed some big faith seeds into you um, that uh, you began to really understand that the visions he's given you are for a set time and I fully believe that this set time is now um, so just take that, let that just, I pray that these just kind of sow into your spirit, um, and that they just sit there and that they don't let you go. Um, when the winds kind of come, um, try to, and try to uh, blow it, blow it away. Just don't let it. Um, I just pray that the word of the Lord waters that. I pray that he just continues to strengthen you. Um, and that, uh, and that you walk forward confident, knowing that you have been chosen for this moment in time. That the dreams and the visions you have made very plain are for you to herald and to run with. It didn't say sit down with. It didn't say crawl with. It didn't say walk with. It said herald and run with it. So here we are. We're going to write the vision, write the revelation Make it very plain for he who grabs a hold of it, heralds it, speaks it out, and can run with it. So let's uh, put our running shoes on, family, because we are going to run. All right. I love you guys. Um, if there's anything that I can um, specifically pray for you, um, you're free to, you know, comment or uh, private message me. Um, I'm just, I'm just standing in agreement with you guys over all of these big God blueprints um, that we are getting to break ground on and build this year. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes, at least for me, I'm looking at a blueprint. And I'm like, I can kind of get an idea what it might look like, but I don't have an idea what it looks like. Right. Um, but we'll get to see that we're going to get to see that. So, um, it's just, it's such an exciting time. It is such an exciting time. Um, so just breathe in and, um, and just let God kind of just carry you 
and um, and get ready to run. Um, I really feel that uh, your feet are going to be moving very, very quickly. All right. I love you guys. God bless you. Thank you for spending this time with me. And um, I'll see you at some point very, very soon. I love you. Bye-bye.